This is One on One with Jasper Cole, Hollywood's bad guy, and so much more. Actor, talent manager, producer, and more. Now he's sitting down with today's top newsmakers from entertainment, politics, pop culture, and beyond. This is One on One with Jasper Cole. Okay, howdy everyone, and welcome to another edition of One on One with Jasper Cole. Right off the bat, please follow us on social media. It's all One on One with J. Cole. It's Facebook, it's Instagram, it's Twitter, it's my website, jaspercole.com. And uh, we are happy to be, today we are starting a brand new segment called Breaking the News. And I'm joined here by the very smart, talented, hilarious, multifaceted Michael Taylor Gray. Hey! Hey there. That's fake news. That's fake news. We'll no, make sure. the opposite day. That's not fake news. Thank you so much. It's a lo- lovely. Welcome lovely. back. Thank you. So since uh, Michael was here last time, he's now become a client of Newman Thomas Management. We're going to take his career in the toilet. <laughs> I, as long as we keep that toilet clean, you know, and I don't have to clean it, I'm fine. He said he'll do anything, and I said good because I'll take ten percent on anybody. Right. Maybe the tidy bull man's still in there. Maybe so. Mm-hmm. But so Michael and I have been talking, and we're both very into politics and cult, uh, current events, and we rant and rave on Facebook and social media and ostracize a lot of people and have family members that won't speak to us. So we decided we wanted to start doing a show or, or, or segment called Breaking the News, where we pretty much break down all the bullshit and all the chaos that's pretty much Trump-related, of course, to start with. But um, so this is our first segment, and I, 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 there's, we couldn't have picked a better time to start because mm-hmm. just last week, I mean, there's tragedy, there's sadness, and then there's the usual, and that's Trump. just the Trump, White and House. that's just Sarah Sanders <laughs> uh, eye makeup, <laughs> well, her wardrobe, God love her. I mean, she's the only one that can make Belle's palsy look w- well because you know the whole left side of her face, she's yeah. got that droopy eye. And yes, Aww. I'm body shaming, I'm look shaming, I'm oh. doing it all right now. He's calling her out, and he's calling himself because out. when That's you're as honest. nasty as she is, she's, she mm-hmm. deserves to be shamed. Mm-hmm. When you, when you know that you're telling a bold faced lie, mm-hmm. and you have that bully, and I do mean bully pulpit, pulpit. to to do it with with which to do it. Right. I'm educated. You're so educated. Um, well, mm-hmm. she's from Arkansas. So it's inbred well, bitch. Arkansas, what the fuck is she talking about? Well, uh, well, you know. I'm just so sick of the whole, like, hypocrisy of it all. Kellyanne. Now, I will say Kellyanne Conway's husband, George Conway. Have you followed him? How does that work out? Because he's like, hates Trump. It's sort of like George Carvel and Mary Matlin. Do you remember back in the day? Oh, do I? Yeah, in the 80s. But I mean, at least, how did that marriage But work? at least they admitted it and talked about it. Kellyanne and George don't, which makes me think secretly weird. Kellyanne hates Trump, too. She's just cashing the paychecks. Well, wasn't she Ted Cruz's? Exactly. And, honey, if you can Put up swallow your own whatever, and we work with that man... Right, and then you know it's going to be sour with oh, its Ted involved. It doesn't have that peroxide no, taste. It's like he ate a it's bunch like of buttermilk. <laughs> you know how your pee with, smells when you eat asparagus. It's like, but that's how it smells with him. It's buttermilk with crackling cornbread. It's not, not as charming. Not as, <laughs> not as charming. Not as tasty. But um, mm. anyway, so that went down fast. first off, we want to <laughs> send our condolences to all the families and the victims in. Squirrel Hill in Pins- right outside of Pittsburgh because that's such a horrible tragedy that happened a week ago yesterday, I believe. Whatever. Every day just mm-hmm. seems like another uh, lifetime with this asshole. Um, and then, of course, right before that were all the pipe bombs that were being sent by that other crazy nut job. And Ever- there were two African Americans killed in the grocery store at Kroger's. Did you heard nothing about? Nothing about. about. Got no press. It just kind right. of... Came and went. Mm-hmm. So went. that's an example. But did you love how the fact too that Trump had to carry on his rallies even the night of the of the uh, shootings at the synagogue? And like you, we were speaking before we went on air here that uh, he also felt compelled to comment on the LA Dodgers manager's decision to take uh, a picture out. Yeah, you know, after it's seven like, innings. Well, but here's the thing too. If the press and the media could quit, please, being shocked and surprised, yeah. waiting for him to pivot, yeah. a sociopath doesn't pivot. 
Mm-hmm. A psychopath doesn't, they have no empathy for other people. He doesn't know any better. I mean, he doesn't know. He doesn't how, know any different. That's right. He does know better. Well, I do believe he does know better. He just doesn't know any different because his whole life has been about, about him, him and the spotlight winning. being on him and winning right. and getting everything, having his father fund his life. Bail him know, out. Bail him out, yeah. And, you know, and he's just, he's, he's, he was put in, a, in an immediate position of power and influence from the very get go. Mm-hmm. So, you know, With he Roger never had Stone. to earn anything. <gasps> Well, I he, keep. I, don't I think keep. He's of this earth. Honey. I keep. Roger Stone is frightening to me. Yeah, he, something just. So he has no gay friends that can that. help him either, because nobody would let him See, go out looking mm, like that. No, no, mm, no, not even in no. Palm Springs, oh, where I reside. That's saying something. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I think even out in desperate hot springs. Yeah, yeah they, maybe they, they in the Mojave Desert, perhaps. You know when that that. That corpse flower uh, cactus is. Potty flies there. lives out there so, with her birds. Here That's all we need to say. Potty flies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. So, so I talked. I've been promoting or not promoting, but telling mm-hmm. everyone about this documentary called Trump: The Trump Family on Netflix. If you have not seen it, it starts in 1973. It's brilliant. It's nine episodes, oh. but it's basically a documentary that's been broken into. Did the New York Times do that? Pr- I think. Well, I don't know who produced it, but it's a. Uh, it shows you. You get to see him from 1973 when the parents were still alive. You get to mm. see the dad, and you mm. watch the trajectory. But he and Roger Stone started together in 1990, p- trying to find a time for him from to run for president. So they have been. He's been sucking his dick that long. Basically, yeah, that little mushroom dick that Stormy Daniels. It's wonder his lips aren't orange and. Well, his face Ten. is no. Oh, Roger. R- Roger. Mm-hmm. Oh, I Please. thought maybe they were both versatile. <laughs> Donald's anything but versatile. I think anything. he would be versatile for Putin. Uh, yeah, right. He definitely takes up the answer for, for that. that. Yeah, but no, it's a great. It's a very interesting documentary, and it kind of gives you an insight into why he is the way he is, and how this political whole this whole thing. He's and he's never lost. Like even in New York City. Every time he would like sue the city f- to not pay taxes on something, mm-hmm. he would win. So the only thing he really failed at were the casinos in uh, in Jersey, and then Daddy bailed him out of that. And then once Daddy died, Russia came along. He didn't have Daddy, so he went to Russia. To Russia with love, right? Mm-hmm. Rula Linska. Yeah. Um, but so that's the that's, golden showers of Russia. Yeah, and so here we sit. It's really good timing because the midterms. Now, this is going to uh, initially air two days after the midterms, and then you'll be listening to it on archives. But the point right. is, the midterms are coming up on uh, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And what do you think about this whole blue wave? Do you think, because Brandon and I were talking before, mm-hmm. we're not, you know, based on Nothing what happened in 2016. Nothing is certain. It's all about turnout. It's yeah. all about turnout. So, you know, do everything you can. And are willing to do, and uh, you know, take somebody with you to the polls. You check with, ask your, ask everybody. I, you know, I even went to a <clears throat> gay men's spa for a little. Is know, that what they're calling R&R. them now? R&R. I didn't yeah. know that's the what, what? They call it. Yeah, 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 yeah. The slammer. And, Wait. No, well, oh, I didn't. I didn't name any names. No, or. no, no. I've heard of something, but that's different. Okay. Um, that's in the realm. Yeah. Okay. And the and the front the, desk cl- clerk. <laughs> <laughs> See how I'm making it sound as if right. it's right. The really concierge, like, the concierge, yeah, who gives you the towel and the. You actually had a conversation. I said, "Are you registered to vote?" Wow. I, I took that opportunity, so I'm just. You are a real giver. Mm. Well, I was later. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> I'm going to make sure he's voting. This is like yeah. the Grand Canyon. Strap uh, yeah, on. It's like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. Mm-hmm. It's an amphitheater. It, it, it is. is. It echoes. It plays. To a full house um, <laughs> plays hip hop. I'm just saying, but anyway, but no, you actually talked to the front, the concierge, I did. I and had, was he registered? Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. And he's uh, he just happened to be uh, a Latino mm-hmm. gentleman, and he's he's probably looks like he's around 30, maybe younger. And I thought that's you know, we want all those, yeah, right. you know, that legal or thing. illegal. I don't know, <laughs> okay. But we wanted to do some illegal thing. Because he couldn't least. vote if he were illegal. So. No, no. If he, no. Well, yeah. 
I said, oh, early but maybe he was born here, and that brings us to the whole yeah. let's let's get rid of the birthright uh, citizenship thing. The latest Trump that he's pulling. Uh, you know, it's it's anything. Well, anything that uh, any previous president, especially Obama, anything that Obama put into place, he wants to undo. Yeah. You know, and but he doesn't really. He said he could do an executive order, he can't. right? He this can't is all to all. This is it's, before the midterms and to just do, kind of freak people out. He's doing it based on the Fourteenth Amendment, the way it's written, and right, which was really there for, like, for slavery, but right. But it's like it's like evangelicals do. My experience growing up Northern Baptist in Canada, Ohio. Southern um, Baptist in Georgia. Right. They're just more loud about it. We're right. very quiet about our praising Jesus. We just fucked our cousins more. We did. Well, we just didn't tell anybody. Right. Well, we married <laughs> ours, so yeah. that was different. <laughs> Look, see how he has to one up. One up. Say, Keep bless going. His heart. Bless her heart. Bless his heart. Yeah, so what was I saying? I interrupted you. You were no, saying um, it was just like... The, it's the, the double standards. Right. It's, you know, it's, it, and it's like what they do with the Bible, uh, evangelicals, uh, you know, the, the ultra-Christian right. Well, well, pick and choose passages in the Bible to suit their needs. Right. Right. You know? Which is what Trump Which is what they're doing with Trump. Do. You know, now, and, and it's just, okay, let, let me backtrack just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now, the whole um, part of what you, you mentioned earlier about us wanting to do this, uh, when we discussed about doing breaking the news, because, you know, every every report that comes on, every, breaking, you know, every news. Show, breaking news, but this just in. This Let's is, just be honest, I'm like, it's the news CNN is broken. who does it. Yeah, the news is broken, so right. we might as well break it down. CNN is right. the one. Everything is breaking yeah. news. Oh, yeah. Just, just, just you know, then. Wolf Blitzer, breaking news. Mm-hmm. So, and I got tired of, I said, I can't send this much, I can't spend this much time in front of the television by myself, yelling and screaming, an audience of one. Right. You know? And well, sometimes the TV talks back, but that's <laughs> a whole other issue. And it just, I thought, there's got to be a lot of me out there, like you as well, you know? And if we had a show, or something that, you know, just regular Joe's. Because mm-hmm. we're regular Joes, you know. We're, we're just, just like Joes, man. Hey, guys. man, what's up? Guys. How about the Dodgers? Right? Can you yeah. believe that fucking Have game? Them Shit. What the hell? Man, <laughs> some pussy. Oh, oh, grab it. Grab it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I thought, let's do it. And then we can, we can add our own little spin on it, some humor. And, you know, because, uh, you know, sometimes you get a lot of comedians or, or celebrities and people and pundits and this and that. But you don't get somebody that's like, like somebody that, you know. Just tells it the way it is. And it's tired of all the bullshit. I am. Yeah. yeah. On both sides. Absolutely. See, the part of the problem I yeah. have, too, is like, the. I mean, even on Facebook and social media, I do have those friends that are, they've drank the Kool-Aid on the far left as well. You can't criticize Obama. You can't criticize Hillary. You can't well, criticize any. No, I know. You know it's I, like, you know, this whole, you know, the wonderful Me Too movement which i'm a hundred thousand percent behind but god forbid you even say for a moment should we investigate this a little bit you know everybody needs to be heard on both sides i have some friends that come at me like if the woman said it is right it's true and i'm like well i mean because the the, was it in new york the 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 the, the, what was the the five central park five yeah central park five who even after they were acquitted yeah Donald Trump was like, eh, bah, you know, they still lied. treating them like they were guilty. Yeah, I mean, what? and we've all we all know of really mm-hmm. cantankerous relationships that break up and marriages and how people go make up shit about each other. So, th- the point I was making is you got to be a little more to the middle on something. You got to be able to question some things. Mm-hmm. Just because a Democrat says it doesn't make it tr- right. And just because a Republican says it doesn't mean it's a lie. It just depends on who's saying it. Well, unless and, it's Donald. Well, that's Donald what I mean. Tells you he doesn't always tell the truth. But, um, no, you're right. You're right. You should always find out for yourself. I mean, that's the same church I grew up in that I ended up leaving. Right. You know, the Canton Baptist Temple. Because I just got tired of the hypocrisy. Right. It's, it's the same church I also, and I remember this very same, the, uh, it's very vivid. Uh, when I was in the 14s department, because they had all the age groups divided, it was that big of a church. Wow. We had a campus. Oh. Was, yeah. And the main congregation was like 4,000 people. And the choir directors were gay. I don't know. Lived with their moms mm, well, in the basement. And I sat, and I, I played in the Wednesday night service on stage. I played my flute. And one, oh. one, one Wednesday, it was Wednesday or Sunday, uh, Jerry Falwell 
was a guest speaker, a preacher. I was as close as I am to you right now. Imagine your minds, our studio audience. You're so lucky. See, I'm so close how to did, him. How did you I, manage I, to not uh, throw yourself on Jerry Falwell? I wore a flame retardant, um, you know, right. outfit. Chastity belt. Yeah, and that helped. So he was a bit, he was... Uh, so I'm just telling you, that's the kind that's of That's how Christian that's, it was. That's how Christian was. Now, there was a guest preacher that Sunday when I, in the 14th department, and he said those very words. He, I forget what he was preaching about, but what I remember him saying is, don't take my word for it. Mm-hmm. Find out for yourself. Right. And I was like, wow. And I think that's the one and only time I ever heard that there, and from somebody who was an evangelical, right. evangelical, you know, born again kind of Christian. Which, but now, of course, the evangelicals are predominantly supporting Trump. Yeah, which and they're that, willing to overlook because of the issues that he supports. That allegedly supports. Well, yeah, you know, abort, overturning Roe v. v. Wade. And can you imagine how many abortions he's paid for? With women, he is an abortion. He is well. He should have been, and that's. I don't mean to be disrespectful. No disrespect to abort. Yeah, yeah. He is. He's not even a miscarriage. Well, did, wasn't it Kamala? Yeah, he just. Mm. Now, wasn't it Kamala Harris during the Kavanaugh um, hearings? Is that right? Hearing? Yeah, she was. Yeah, part didn't of that. she say? Uh, can you tell? Point to any law that uh, tells men what they can do with their bodies. Yeah, she did, and there was crickets. And, and he, yeah, crickets, right? Yeah. yeah, and he couldn't. No. Because there aren't any. Well, this Heidi Heitkamp in North Dakota who's on the verge of mm. losing her Senate she race. She will lose it. Yeah, all because she did the right thing and stood up and voted against Kavanaugh. I mean, my whole thing about Kavanaugh, that's mm-hmm. a good point. I forgot about that happened recently, is let's just take the sexual if we had to take the sexual assault allegations mm-hmm. away the way he behaved in I, the hearing I, it was shocking to me for me was enough to disqualify him right there did Even you if, watch it or did you hear the, no uh, I watched it I was in my car at the time listening to it and yeah. was, my jaw and then maybe did you get and then when you saw clips it was yes. even worse because you get to see his uh, his anger and his well, expressions and his condescending like you know wasn't there like almost 200 lawyers or whatever something across the nation who who you know wrote band together mm-hmm. yeah and 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 it was always it was there was a recommendation perhaps for him to be disbarred or something i mean he so, was mm-hmm. just like that he's another entitled person like trump who like how dare you question me i i i never my mom was a dis, was a, a district attorney and the moment he tried, I he tried to paint himself as like this this, this poor kid from the wrong side of the streets, uh, and like your mom was the a moment I heard his mom was a dad. district attorney. It's mm-hmm. like he's never been held he accountable went, no. for anything. And he went to one of the top prep schools for boys in the nation. Right? So, oh no, he never had any privilege or ends no. you know, to get into the top no. schools. No, yeah. No, no, no. But then you know, but my point was here's Heidi. Yeah. She does the right thing and stands mm-hmm. up for it. But so. Well, the slip up that's going to get her. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, she, this, is this is called the dialogue. This is called overlap. This, this is how we have discourse in America, ladies and gentlemen. Right. <laughs> this is how we, truly. Right. Um, uh, see, this, when I interrupt myself, then I screw myself. This over. is what happens and after fifty. I don't know 50. what I'm talking. Yeah. You were saying something about Heidi Hyde Camp. And I oh, said, what she slipped up on is that uh, she inadvertently posted the name uh, published the oh. names of, of sexual assault victims right um, and who did without not. their permission mm-hmm. but that was after the hearings she was already right, right. pretty much but on slippery that was such a big after yeah, that, that, so that was like oh yeah no. the jaws defeat right out of the jaws yeah of so it, apparently it's Texas Tennessee uh, for the Senate rates, races that we have, Wisconsin, those are the three big ones. So, I mean, and even Missouri is surprising. Yeah. Claire McCaskill is fighting for her She's only, seat. She, well, you know, I mean, it's he's young, uh, he's young, attractive, right? You know, candidate, and and that's a part of this this wave of things that are changing. You're getting this that gener that young, much younger generation who's on really both sides themselves into it. on both sides. Yeah, because he's yeah. The, he's the Republican yeah. the candidate. But uh, I tell you what, I'm really excited to see those two is uh, Beto O'Rourke in Texas. If he, I think he's a real oh, good wow. shot. It's, I think it's he close. has a now. Remember, they are only they're they're polling likely voters. Mm-hmm. Okay, in uh, Georgia or is it? Te- oh, was it We're going to get to Texas? Georgia in a minute. Yeah, um, they've had as many people vote in Georgia early 
early voting. Me, early voting that had as many people vote early voting in Georgia as voted Ever. entirely in the 2014 Which midterms. It's a good example of hopefully what's going to happen on and that's Tuesday. Mostly, and a lot of the younger generation, uh, the gen, were they Gen Y, X, Z, millennials, are yeah. they? Are they millennials? I or think they're Generation Z. Or, I don't know. Whatever. You pick they're lazy ladies. ass. The yeah. lazy ass bitches. I mean, did you? See, there was no, an article they're recently. They're just waiting to. Th- well, there was an article that mm-hmm. said how a lot of Finuc. them were like, "Well, I, they couldn't, they couldn't be bothered to put a stamp on to do the mailing, and they need to find time, and they were very hard to." It was Time's sad. always there. You don't need to find it. Yeah, get it's off your there. fucking phones and yeah. go vote. Yeah, that's what we should do. If we could make it where you could vote from your iPhone. Then millennials would vote. Yeah, that's a good idea. Right? Why haven't we done that? I'm, I'm being sarcastic. Why can't we do that? No. From the iPhone? No. no. Just like I think people should read a newspaper every now and then. I was speaking to a gentleman yesterday, and I do say gentleman because I don't want to tell you the story behind that. But we'll call him a gentleman. Well, he must have been older. No. Oh. No. Because I don't, mm-hmm. if you call it, usually they'd call you the gentleman. If it was a younger person. You better step back. But, but <laughs> no, gay he, men but who only date him. younger people, that's another show we're going to get into. Cause <laughs> Nambla? No. So Because uh, that's a whole other issue. But you, you're trying to trip me up, aren't you? <laughs> you're trying to trip me up. No, I... Like, he, re- he, he reads... A, I'm going to get you. Go ahead. He reads a newspaper every day. I'm like, to to I, you? Yes, because I, I that's one skill I haven't I haven't mastered yet. Yeah, I that's was one park, way to get them to yeah, read. I was in the park one day, you Billy, know, I didn't want to get my pants me. dirty, and I was sitting in a newspaper, and somebody came by. and says, "Are you reading that?" I said, "Yes." I stood up, turned a page, and sat back down. Wow. Mm-hmm. And how long did you guys date? A couple of years. <laughs> he never read that paper. So yeah, wow. no, so I, no, I see what you're saying, yeah. but, but but the truth is that was that's a lost I, cause. They don't, they're not going. Well, can but, I tell you something? I, I don't read a newspaper. Well, I don't either. Right, but I'm just saying, I, you know, and I I, want, I would like to commit to doing that on a more regular basis. Do they still could, make them? Yes, they do. Even a, well, I just having it, like I don't do no, a Kindle. I, you know, I like having an actual book in my hands. Right, the, and I say all that to say this. I love when people say that. Um, and you're saying nothing usually when I'm not, someone says it's, that. It's uh, signifying nothing. Right. That's a dead mm-hmm. ringer that you're about to I'm put some bullshit that, out the there. Thing is, is that I like to go to the voting booth and cast an actual ballot, a, a paper ballot. I don't want to do anything digital. I want that paper trail there, honey. You well, know, just like when you crop dust a room. I want a trail. I, I've gotten to the point where I love the voter by mail because then. You, if you do that permanently, yeah. no matter where you are, if you're traveling, if you're yeah. working, or if you're... And again, you have a paper trail. Yeah, that's just true. You do. That's what I'm saying. So and you just... don't have to see other people. And especially those poor souls that volunteer at the polls. God bless them for doing it. But I don't know if the prisons, I always if they're on work release, or, yeah. or they're just shut-ins mm-hmm. that they get out once a year. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not judging. I'm not a no, judgy person. There was no judgment in no. any of that. As my mother would say, as long uh, as they were pretty, well, bless their hearts. Yeah. They're probably happier if they're pretty. Well, At least if they're poor and pretty, it's better than poor and ugly. Well, speaking of poor and ugly, <laughs> now, as I, my parents were racist light. And now right. You couldn't tell them this, but, you know, oh, she's pretty for a black girl. For a I'm black like, girl. And I... So I, went, I got in the habit. This is what I would do. I, I said, well, you're pretty for a white woman, Mama. Oh. She'd be like, what? I'm like, uh-huh. Wow. Uh-huh. Well, it's mm-hmm. true. It kind of reminds her. Yeah. But, I, but, we had, <laughs> but we had black friends. Right. And I'm like, The, the this housekeeper. Is, oh, no. no. We didn't have a housekeeper. My mom was very good at keeping the she, house. She wanted, I was the housekeeper. Well, I grew up in Georgia, remember, mm-hmm. so in the Deep South. But we had this wonderful black lady, Camilla, who was like a second mom to the family. Was she from the Caribbean? <laughs> no, she was from the, the housing project around the corner. Oh. But but I love. But no, the truth is, she was such a member of the family that she basically my mom, my parents just paid her to come and talk talk to them at a certain point. You know, oh. by the time she got older, we would just pay her to. She would watch my mom iron, and because she. That's how much we loved her. So, I think night. there's some poetic justice in that. And then she killed herself. No, she did not. I'm kidding. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> she did wow. not kill herself. Wow. Yeah, with the iron. 
but my point is <laughs> you learn racism from your families, you know, and just because like I grew up in the South, but I always say, of course it's all learned behavior. Yeah. It's I, just I, like I had sexism liberal parents who did not, who I didn't know any different. I really didn't. When I started first grade, in 1970, it was the first year of desegregation. 1870? 1872. Oh. It was uh, the first year of desegregation. Nice. So they were the first year that the schools had integrated. But what happened was most That's a of lot the, of kids in a one room Most schoolhouse. of the white families put their kids in private school. Because they didn't want their kids going to school with black kids. Well, that's what happened to... I was just talking to somebody about uh, Stern, Howard Stern. Howard today, Stern. Who grew up in New York. Flushing or Flushing, some, somewhere Ro- Roosevelt, else. Roosevelt, Roosevelt, oh, well, anyway. Yeah. It, oh, literally overnight. Because if you watch his uh, David Letterman uh, special... Uh, David doing his... Appearances on there? Yeah, yeah. Those one-on-ones that he does now for his uh, on Netflix. Uh, they're very which good. are very good, yeah. Very good. And he has that one Except with... Except the beard. David's yeah, there's a beard. problem with that beard. Yeah, go ahead. But Howard uh, mentions how literally overnight, one night, he wakes up the next day, all the neighbors have moved, all the white people, and there are black families there now. They literally, just came in. Yeah. And they were the only white family in their little neighborhood there. Part of that, that whole area that he was in really shifted, shifted all of a sudden. And his parents made a point of not leaving. Right. See, that's what I'm saying. My yeah. parents made a point of sending me to the public school, and I was one of like maybe 10 white kids from first grade till sixth grade. And honestly, I I didn't know any different. It was fine. I, I didn't think any oh, different. Oh, sure, you're not from a shithole nation. <laughs> which is Africa, right? Or yeah. any, which countries did he call the shithole nations? Oh, anything that's not like Sweden Anything that's or Norway. not Norway. He like picked the whitest countries he could think of. Right. Yeah. Totally. And I heard a good thing for, we're going to have our own version of MAGA. We are? Yeah. It's going to make assholes go away. <laughs> I heard that. I, thought, I like that. Do, speaking of um, old gays, did you see Barbara Streisand on Bill Maher Friday night? No. Okay, have you so ever she, heard her new song? She, it's very well, they inspiring. played, she's debuting her album. So okay, they played yeah. the, the, yeah. the lie song, The Lies. Yeah. So they it's played, a bit dramatic. They played the video, yeah. and of course, Barbara had shifted the whole room. She yeah. m- moved her chair to the other side. She had her own lighting. Did she have her white microphone? She did not. She's she's in her eating stage, so she mentioned that she's the Trump. The last two years, she's been stress eating, so uh, she was in all black. So we just saw her. It's the Trump fifty. Her face. So she says she only feels better because she can nosh and eat oh. while she's watching the news. But her big plea was to stop covering Trump so yeah. much. Yeah. Stop covering his yeah. ra- his rallies. Yeah. If he farts, it's like, oh my God. Because imagine and he loves, yeah. oh, he yeah. can't stand not getting attention. So if, right. if people will quit talking about him. Yeah. It's not you know. The, it's only until recently I think that Fox News is finally not covering the entire rally oh. every time he has a rally. Have you? Do you ever? I just occasionally. What? What's the point? In the middle of a crisis that's happening, I'll flip over to Fox. I'm just curious what they're. Ninety uh, percent of the time, it's something about Hillary's emails. Like in the middle of the synagogue shooting, I clicked. I clicked over, and there was that cunt, Judge Jean Pirro. You know that bitch that looks like she's had so much plastic surgery. She's really old and oh, bitter. Her. But she was talking about Hillary's emails, and I thought, you know, people I hope, are being I hope they do find them, and they're nothing but a bunch of cat videos. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they. Get. What, what do you think is going to happen to Kellyanne? All these people that have been out there, his surrogates after this is over with. Do you think they're going to have any kind of like prestige or respect or? <sighs> I, other than other than Fox News, those who, you know, no, uh, those who really dug in their heels, right, and said nothing or were complicit or helped perpetuate, you know, like when it was Kellyanne that said alternative facts. Alternative facts. Oh. I, I I just wanted, you know, I I'm not a violent person. I am. You know, I am in a role play situation. <laughs> it's called acting. Right. Um. Yeah, but I, I literally, it gets me that angry. Yeah, that I want to like put a fist through, a, you know, a, a virtual face. Yeah, I don't, I don't perpetuate any kind of actual physical violence. I don't, I don't, I don't promote that at all. It's not the way to do it. We have to use our, our uh, the power of democracy, democracy, while we still our, have it. Our tongue. Yeah, 
The verbal fights. Yes. Oh, I've got an intelligence. Tongue. Yeah. Yeah. It's tongue fighting. Mm. I call it tongue fighting. They call it tongue fighting. Tongue fighting. <laughs> I love That's it. a good song from the mm-hmm. 70s. Tungu fighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm only two years older than Michael Taylor Gray. So we can He's 87. Make, we can make references that mm-hmm. we can both relate to. Mm-hmm. That's why we, if we were ever dating, we could actually have a conversation. Are we dating? Unlike older men and women who date younger people, mm-hmm. other than the sex, you can't really talk about anything. Yeah. But, I mean... Why, why use words? Why, why should they talk anyway? Right. Just yeah. finish and leave. Somebody asked me one time, what do you like? I said, spontaneity. <laughs> really? How really? About fi- just let's go with it, and if I don't like it, I'll let you know. And leave. Yes. I'm not going to give you a list of things I like, really. it's not a gr- You're not going grocery shopping. Here's the Pop-Tart. Now go. You go down this aisle, and if, they don't like, if I don't like what's... I, I just won't. I said, no, nothing, nothing here for me. Here's a juice box and a Pop-Tart. Now leave. Oh, wow. You're done. Those are my first two boyfriends. Yeah. That... <laughs> That's t- the new drag duo. And the pop tart. Juice, juice box. <laughs> I was the pop tart. He was the juice. Yeah. <laughs> but we digress. Me too. Frequently. Yeah. So, did you vote? I will on. I, I, oh, like that's I said, right. Because you said you I, like I've to go it. in. I've done the paper. I, I mean, the, the uh, vote early. Uh, but you but prefer really, the old. Yeah. I, I tell you, it's like when I went and voted for uh, this last time when I voted for Hillary, there was some. Something about going in and casting the ballot. It's like when I cast my ballot for Barack Obama, the first, not just because he was African American. I stood in line for that. But it was. That was a special part of it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And my aunt and uncle, God rest their souls, my aunt Josephine and Uncle Eugene had lived, you know, most of their lives up in Ohio and um, relocated after my uncle retired down to uh, North Carolina. And they stood in line for like, I was like four and a half, five hours. Five hours. My oh. aunt wouldn't do that for anybody. Well, I but normally she, won't stand she in line vote. to see Jesus, but I stood in line for oh, Barack Obama. I see him every day. You do? Oh, I'm a bride of Christ, you know. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I don't stand in line for That's things. Not an I, yeah, I don't. No. No. He doesn't do lines, ladies I don't do lines. No. no. He, he, he gives somebody a, you know, five, I like it if they stand in line to see me, but, oh, nice. you know. But no, They're Dennis and I, we stood in line on Santa Monica Boulevard at, this, at the... Uh, there's a Jewish funeral home. That's actually where we voted for Barack Obama the first year, first term. You were holding Shiva? It was literally in a funeral home for for uh, Jewish people. Which From was, death springs forth life. Right. And so we this, stood there. poetic. We did it. Mm-hmm. But no, I understand what you're saying. But mm-hmm. um, so... What was I saying? Not, you were just saying that your aunt and uncle, yeah. they actually I, stood yeah. in line and she so, doesn't stand in line no, for anything. No, and so I think that there. this is... By this the way, is, do you notice how I can... Are you impressed that I know what you were saying and I bring you back around? I'm not as impressed as you are with yourself. <laughs> but I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm hoping you're going to do it for me when that happens. But go oh, ahead. Oh, Lord, hopefully someday. So, again, try again. So you were just saying that you're impressed that they stood in line because yeah, normally they would not. They wouldn't do that. And I, I really think that you look at what's been happening. Those first, um, those first elections... In Virginia, mm-hmm. okay, when you had the amount of people who voted and the amount of Democratic candidates who won and the amount of first-time candidates who first won time. and the amount of women who won. And one of those candidates was a trans, is a transgender right. individual right. who beat the gentleman, the, the I know, say gentleman, who put forth the legislation to saying, you know, you can't use these, you, you got to use the bathroom that so your birth I mean, certificate says I think says the karma, that, mm-hmm. that was just so Honey. amazing. Really? Yeah, and now now Trump, you see, he, he's had, he has his little stubby hands and everything. Mm-hmm. And he wants, you know, he even wants to, uh, to define gender as just male and female. Right. No. 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 Mm-mm. He's not, yeah. Because we can't even define who you are, period. Right. You're not even human. Well, Ivanka's there to help out with all that. She's going to be the bridge. She's the real first lady. She's no, the Ivan- bridge. But her mother. Ivana? Oh. Ava- did you see that interview a while back? I've seen them all. She has she- some new book or something. She said, I was the, I'm the real first lady. <laughs> I'm like, really? And then <laughs> Melania's like, oh, no, honey. Oh, no. Mm-mm. Well, speaking yeah. of Georgia, I knew Marla mm-hmm. Maples in college also. So we're get, we just my keep roommate s- has a Marla Maples story too. Oh, we all have a Marla Maples it's quite story. A story. Do do we? Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk about it? She was going to a um, uh, destiny wedding in in Italy. 
uh, for a friend of hers. And there were a bunch of girls who were all connected to this individual getting married. And Marla was one of them. Uh-huh. And in this, where they were staying, this French villa, whatever, uh, you know, it, she was her roommate, Marla. And she, and she just, she was just like an interesting person. And she had a lot, a lot of luggage, a lot, a lot of things. Well, if and, you, and she, and she had a pre, she had some kind of agreement with Donald. She can't talk ill about it, but that's how she—that's how he divorced her because she actually criticized him, uh-huh. and it got printed. Oh, well. And speaking of her. like hypocrisy with mm-hmm. religion, Marla's from Dalton, Georgia, the carpet capital of Georgia of the actually of the Does country. Her carpet match her drapes? I think not. No, no. But mm-hmm. she was she was a good Christian girl, and Just was like you, yeah. And she was trying to model and act. And her mother was a stage mom. And she was in the Miss Georgia USA pageant. And my good friend at the time was in the pageant. And it was a two-day, like the Saturday was a preliminary. And then the audience comes in on Sunday. So on Sunday, me and my... He's trying to explain how a pageant works You know, in case you people don't understand. I was in pageant, the musical comedy. I was Miss Deep South. Let's not boomerang From Georgia. See? Yeah, Lorenda Sumford. See, I've been a Miss Georgia. Okay, so imagine imagine your character in Mm -hmm. that. Lorenda. Uh Mm Uh-huh. You had the preliminaries on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. You did the judges. And the swimsuit. Then on Sunday, when the audience arrived, so mm-hmm. I saw my girlfriend and ran up to her and said, how's it going? And she goes, oh, my God, it's so great. But, oh, my God, there's this one girl. Yeah. She's fucking all the judges. And she goes, she's from Dalton, and she's really got big blonde hair, and she's really, really a whore. And we were like, okay. So the, it starts, and out comes Marla, who was a little more into eating dairy and carbs then. She was like we all were. Little she, was soft a little, take. she was a little fuller. A little soft. Yeah, she had a little water in the skin. A little spongy. A little spongy. <laughs> yeah. She could absorb things. She was retaining. She was? And, uh, yeah, and there she was, and she got first runner-up, and my friend got second runner-up, and then we found out the woman who won... Didn't fuck the judges. No, well, she had to fuck them for two years in a row, so apparently oh. in Georgia, you need to fuck two years in a row. Mm. But br- shortly after that, Marla went and became Miss Hawaiian Tropic, and then off to New York City, and the rest where do you is go history. if you went home in Tropic? <laughs> you go to New York City naturally. <laughs> but my point, okay, so here's this good Christian girl, and she goes and becomes someone's mistress for three years. They okay. were together, Donald, for three years. Well, you know, um, he had her. He had. If you watch right, the documentary, yeah. he had her in one of the uh, casinos in Atlantic City that Ivana was running. Ivana was running the uh, casinos there, and actually. She was a really good business person up to a point. Mm -hmm. But he had Marla living in one of the uh, suites there while he was married. So for her, you know, Miss Spirituality and the whole thing, whatever. And she's, they they have Tiffany. I would love to have been there on the, was it Lake Tahoe? And, and oh, the Aspen, when, he, she Aspen. Conf- when she oh, confronted. Yeah. There, there's Marla, and, and that's how she found out. Right? Ivana. There's Marla and, da- and Donald, the Donald. Yeah. That's like, how oh. it all happened. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But she's, I noticed Marla's been very, well, Tiffany, the daughter, gets secret service. So Marla travels with her everywhere. So in essence, she's kind of getting the treatment of a first lady. Mm-hmm. She probably would have been a better first lady, actually. At least she could speak. Well, she was the first runner-up. She w- <laughs> See how I did that? <laughs> that was very good. See, uh, thank you. She I was am first runner-up. to every other That's word true. Think. Yeah. <laughs> But she's um, but she's got Tiffany, who got the worst of both of them. I got Tiffany too. This ring, I'm that's really. And this who did you fuck to get that? Well, this was the ring is from. My it's radio. Ex. Remember, no one can see. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you. Oh, I know. Let me describe it. It's yeah. a it's a beautiful. Look, I can't tell if it's gold or silver. It's silver, honey. I don't. This really lighting gold. we have we have such. I don't li- like gold. We have very mute lighting in here yeah. because we're of, of our age. And it's, so that's why I don't wear yellow. Yeah, and it's I'm already jaundiced. Or orange, Ralph Cole Jr. Orange, uh, or orange, and we have we have incense that, that are going in here. We were talking about my jewelry. Okay, get back to that. So it's <laughs> it's okay. I feel yeah, it's, oh, it's okay. Well, I mean, to it's fuck like, someone, I wear the diamonds. Well, yeah. <laughs> Five minutes after I unpacked all my boxes and got rid of the boxes, he was like, "I'm done." I'm like, "Oh, really?" Really? It was You're done, done with you? I said, a, I said, a cake is done. You're finished. I said, this is... No, yeah, so I said, I would have kept my boxes had I known. Wow. But anyway, 
I digress. So I did get for that that Christmas prior, I did get this nice rope design. It's very nice silver ring from Tiffany's, and then but this uh, uh, the bra- bracelet, he has a bracelet. It's too. a clasp bracelet, right? And it's uh, it's very it's kind of a Greek design. It's very simple and classic mm-hmm. looking. It's Greek passive. It's it's Greek passive. How many Greeks do you know are passive? <laughs> please. And um, yeah, this was a really sexy guy I, I met in New York at one of the gay prides. And uh, he came out and visited here, and we went to Tiffany's in Beverly Hills. And There's a theme here with you I, getting I, Tiffany I, I, jewelry. I don't know how this worked I out. Mean, yeah, and I'll tie it all together. I'm and glad so, that you're so, like, for love. We, Go ahead. I, I didn't ask for these things. Really all right, there was gifts. Seriously, I just, I just must have put it out in the universe. Uh-huh. Thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. Vision and, boards, mm-hmm, vision Oprah. Board. Oh, yeah, Eat right. some more bread. <laughs> so we go up to the <laughs> counter, and because he had something similar to this, and and he was looking, uh, you know, stuff, and he, they pulled this one out, and, you know. Of your ass. Right? Because I sat on it as quick <laughs> as I could. So they wouldn't sit. Make sure you're going to keep we're, it. We're, we're like, didn't we have the, no. There was, yeah. You never brought it out. So, um. And he says he puts it on my wrist, and he says, "What do you think?" I said, "I think it's very nice." He says, "It's yours." Oh wow! I, it, and you were so shocked I, you didn't have to do I, anything for it I, later on. But um, no, ex- I was like, I had a, a pretty woman moment. <laughs> I was literally like, "It's yours." Like, oh. Oh. It's like I want both showcases. Wow. It was just she was a whore, so a hooker, pretty woman. You know that. <laughs> yeah. And. Right. So, point being, yeah, yeah. you, you felt very pain. similar. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. but that was that was that was cool. That was cool. Are you Facebook friends moments. at least? <laughs> what? I don't. I'm, I've lost track. Do you love? I'm like a, I'm, I'm do, like Ava Gabor. She's a dotting when they when they, when they want to. She almost turned into Carol Channing just now. She said, you know, when they ask for the ring back, give them the ring, but you keep the stone. But you continue to be Merv Griffin's beard, Ava. <laughs> she had a bigger beard than he did. I think. Yeah. The Zsa darling. Zsa Zsa. Zsa Zsa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, so, see, uh, I told you we were going to be, women. we were going to just run the train all over this place today. We were going to digress. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, but remember when that was the thing that was like the odd news item? Was the Zsa Zsa like slapping, slapping a, a cop her, in uh, Beverly Hills? Or letting or her, her dogs out on the plane. Her Prince von <laughs> husband driving around like wearing no pants. Who claimed to be um, Anna Nicole's baby's father. Oh, my God. He threw that had into the ring really it's like yeah he used to cruise west hollywood also yeah so he and angeline oh but speaking of poor for those of you who, new who may not be new in la billboards. but angeline was sort of an iconic old blonde she was sort of like a jane mansfield look-alike that had a pink she's Corvette. famous for being famous she was pre Is she you're talking about like she's dead well, have you seen her is she dead to you do you know she's like seventy three? Yeah, yeah. She she's now selling memorabilia out of her little. She's been doing that for years. Out of the back of her. I've seen her in the Trader Joe's parking lot. Ten dollars for a picture. Oh yeah. You yeah. go up to her at all? If you even say a word to she her, she wants you to pay she's for like, it. Mm-hmm. Pay for it. Mm-hmm. Ten dollars. Yep. The rumor was for years she had a very wealthy uh, sponsor, an old man who paid for the billboards and stuff, and then he he died, and all her stuff was. I just remember some years ago. She had a storage unit in Hollywood on Coenga, and they were gonna, they were th- gonna auction all her stuff. She owed her storage bill and couldn't. Get, so there was a GoFundMe page to get her storage out. You okay? I'm still gassy. Oh my God, you all right? I got some agita. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want to go. Brr, brr, brr. Yeah. This is like NPR. That'd be classy. We're, uh, we're talking very small. Yes. Like I like your sweaty balls. They're yeah. Very, very tasty. Speaking Moist. of Saturday Night Live, you saw Alec Baldwin punched. Oh. Uh, Reporter, or was it a reporter? No, no. Or was it, it was a, a person? Some parking oh, some spot. guy got his parking spot. I, you know, I think he's. Yeah, you know, <sighs> yeah. I think things for him. I think they're taking advantage of the situation and they blew it out of proportion. It'll come. Hopefully, hopefully the alternative facts will come out, and um, we'll find, but you know, and we'll be fine. I'm, I'm fine. So with him I want to. I want to yeah. save the last part of our show to talk about Brian Kemp in Georgia, Stacey a- Abrams. Well, there's also. Uh, Gillum and DeSantis in Florida. We have an African American man running against the incumbent. Well, you know they don't want to monkey it up there in, That's in Georgia. What he said. I mean, in Florida. Yeah. You know. Uh, oh my god. But do you know how great it would be if Abrams and he and Gillum could win? I, I mean, I'm that would you, be really. She, she's something else. She is. She's really smart. She is showing the Democratic Party 
how to shift things and to to not take their bait mm-hmm. when it's and, and 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 to go in the and keep moving forward right you know so she because she was asked about um some reporter asked her if she thought he was racist she says i think some of the results of what he's doing are racist but i i can't i don't know his heart i can't question his heart right I was like, wow, that was a really smart answer. Answer. So she's not denigrating him as an individual. She's not questioning his worth as an individual, but she's questioning uh, his His actions actions. and the results of his actions. Well, this brings me to, okay, so this is Mm -hmm. a great time to talk about this. So for a lot of the listeners may not know, but I grew up in Athens, Georgia, and I went to school with Brian from, I I think it was, I I know it was sixth grade and high school, but it could have been earlier. Anyway, the point being, I knew Brian, I knew his family, my family, I have cousins that work with him, they're in business with him. He married uh, a local girl, her sister is also married to a senator from Georgia, their father was a Democrat senator mm-hmm. from Georgia. So it's all very incestuously political family. A black dog Democrat. Yeah, yeah, he was a Democrat. And then mm-hmm. when Brian, mm-hmm. a lot of people don't realize, Brian had the, in 2003, he ran for uh, as a Republican mm-hmm. for the same seat that her father used to be a senator in. And he okay. uh, got that and won, and he was in, I think, in one term. And then he left politics and went into business, and he tried to be the agricultural commissioner, and he failed. And then when Karen mm-hmm. Hendel, that piece of work... Uh, now, who's Karen? Well, Karen was a, was a Georgia... She was the Georgia Secretary of State in 2010, and, and she... Now he is. So she picked she him. She ran for she senator. And I don't know if you remember, mm-hmm. she... She oh. narrowly beat that really handsome young white uh, Democrat in Georgia. That was another really tight race. That um, the only time should, you should ever be a handsome <laughs> white young Democrat is like because you're the dominatrix, right? Well, and she won, she it. won, yeah. and Brian was appointed Secretary of State. Oh, yeah, but yeah. then he has since been elected Secretary oh, of State. Oh, okay. Okay. So, well, just like George. Just like George. So for those of us who know Brian, and this is what a lot of people said about Trump, who mm-hmm. knew Trump prior to winning, and I didn't quite understand it. They would say, I don't know who this person is. Like, I don't know who this Trump is. Mm-hmm. He was never a racist. He may have been a lot of things, but mm-hmm. he was he was Democrat. He was not racist. He was voting for Hillary and Bill. I mean... well. Well, it, the racist thing has been part of his well, lexicon it, for a while. We we now know that had been kind of hidden with yeah. the father mm-hmm. and the the apartments, but publicly mm-hmm. his yeah. image was not. Yeah, right. the same with Brian. You know, Brian mm-hmm. was always like sort of this moderate Republican. He was never like overly mm-hmm. far to the right or whatever. He, when he did these commercials, I don't know if you saw his commercials. Oh. My God! Yeah. yeah, look, we're going to build the wall. I'm going. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get me some Mexicans. I got a big his children as props. He, first of all, that's Who not his. That? It's not his accent. He doesn't talk like that. Um, oh. yeah, totally doesn't talk about. And then the one with the shotgun on the front porch. He he oh. had a, the one right 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 around the Parkland shootings. Mm-hmm. It wasn't long mm-hmm. after that. So. I said at the time, whoever is advising him, who's ever running his campaign, is clearly fucked up, right? But that was me trying to, like, give him the benefit of the doubt. And Mm -hmm. rather than try to backtrack and make apologies, he just has doubled down and gotten more racist and more racist and more uh, more unethical and cheating with the whole voter suppression stuff. He's taken almost 700,000 people off. The voter rolls. Allegedly. He's purged. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. But then there's a former Missouri Secretary of State who had a big special on CNN last night. Um, he basically is out there telling people that the GOP put this whole thing to into motion okay. around 2008 mm-hmm. about we're going to learn, we're going to teach everyone how to uh, our Republican candidates, the Secretary of States, mm-hmm. how to purge voters and how to do voter suppression. And that's basically what they've been doing. They've had a, they've had a long game plan. And the gerrymandering. The gerrymandering, yeah. And, you know, and with them controlling the House like they did. Right. They have for so long now. Right. Um, you know, Mitch McConnell was able to, you know, not uh, appoint a lot of federal judges. So a lot of judge uh, positions were open throughout Obama's administration. Right. And now you see they're getting filled. Right. Right. With right. these ultra conservatives. They're, they're, they're from the ground up, honey. And, and my whole thing is... It, 
as we're getting toward the end of the show, I can't believe it. Here's my whole How thing. How does that happen? I know it's like a sport for a lot of these people. They think of co- politics as a sport. It's like a football game, and they think, oh, w- we can do whatever's within the legal rules or whatever. Yeah. But then now it's gone way into illegal activities. Mm-hmm. It, but at the end of the day, a lot of the politicians feel like they are playing characters, that this is not who they really are, and they're actually just appeasing their constituents. They're just trying to... Well, the, people get so immersed in their own egos. Power. They lose sight of... They spend so much time in the bubble, as right. they call it, the Beltway in, in D.C., and not enough time with their own... You know, people. They forget what home... They forget where home is. Right. What home is about. Judy Garland never forgot... Them. Let 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 people not forget that. Right? You know, it took her a pair a pair of fancy <laughs> shimmery red shoes to get her back there, which they never would have had there. So in I guess our our as we get toward yeah. the end of our mm-hmm. first show, I think our message would be: if Brian Kemp and all the racist tech crews watch The Wizard of yeah. Oz, is that our message? Yeah. yeah, just click your heels, girls. Yeah, because yeah. we maybe they could borrow Lindsey Graham's pumps, honey. <laughs> Because she done lost bitch. her damn mind. Uh, you should, you should, you should read. My, <laughs> did you read my last tweet? Yes, I said you Tim. worthless pos. I mean, since I, he's her a piece of shit. He, he since a, John McCain oh, died, oh, she has like let she the couldn't wait freak to, flag she fly. She threw off that petticoat, and you know she's uh, boy. That, there's no southern mask there now. She, honey. And Mama's she, in the oh, basement. Did and you see, she her her, t- her little tearful diary during Kavanaugh's? I've got the vapors. <laughs> It's a wonder he didn't do that with his dick in his mouth. <laughs> you know, so you know. fuck you, Lindsey uh, Graham, is what we're saying. No, I wouldn't do that with my enemy's dick. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's awful. But we we're yeah. gonna say yeah. we know everyone's gonna get out and vote. Yeah. They're gonna do what they can to yeah. oh, take back this country from the fucking racist. It's that important, White House. It's it that really is important. We mm-hmm. need to get back to global warming and taking care of the environment and women's rights and gay rights and trans rights. We need to start voting for things, right? Not, not tearing against. things down, building up walls, mm-hmm. and, you know, and then and then just ignoring facts and times. Facts and times. We got to get mm-hmm. back to as much as we complained about what we had before. We didn't realize how good we had it until this monster yeah. came in. So, yeah. Michael, thank you so much for breaking down the news with me today. We're going to continue this. It's going to be. A great segment that we do. Everyone go. Michael, where can people find you on social media? Uh, well, just, just Google me. <laughs> Google me. It Google feels good. You? Every time you do it, every time it pings, and the, you're, it you're on Facebook. People can I find am. you on Twitter and Facebook, yeah. and it's your name, mm-hmm. Michael, yeah, it's Michael Taylor, Taylor Gray. Gray. That's G R A Y. That's gay with a. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. a daddy with candy. Right. Happy Halloween. Bye. Anyone, <laughs> everyone, and anyone listening, thanks for joining yeah. in. This is One on One with Jasper Cole. We've been breaking the news. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for checking out One on One with Jasper Cole. Check out past episodes and get the latest as they're released. Subscribe today on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube.